This is an NBC News report. I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC News, New York. And you are looking at pictures at uh, Cape Canaveral, the Kennedy Space Center, where the shuttle Challenger is on the pad now after a delay this afternoon of about an hour and a half. This is the same uh, shuttle, of course, that 17 days ago did not leave the pad with just three seconds before launch time because a computer indicated that there was trouble on board. They, some difficulties have uh, cropped up in a gyroscope on one of the solid rockets that you see on the side there. They command the pitch of yaw. That helps guide the space shuttle into uh, space. That's apparently been cured. Now let's listen for a moment to, to the countdown. We have a go for auto sequence start. Challengers 4 redundant computers now have primary control of critical vehicle functions. Minus 20 seconds. 20 seconds. With 20 seconds to go, we just want to tell you that uh, this is a Space Everything Lab 2. There will be 13 experiments in all, most of them astronomy minus experiments. 10. We have go for engine start. T minus 5, 4, 3, 3 2, 1. Ignition and liftoff. We have liftoff of Challenger in Space Lab 2. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Tower clear. Roll program initiated. Houston now controlling. They'll be throttling down to 65% uh, throttles on their main engines. Good news for NASA. The shuttle Challenger off after about a 90-minute delay today. And clear skies over the Cape. That's a spectacular picture. And 17 days ago, with just three seconds to go, it had to sit on the pad because a computer ruled that it was not ready to take off. There was a glitch somewhere in the system, so it was delayed for 17 days. Velocity now 1,000 uh, feet per second. Distance down range to nautical miles. Altitude uh, there are a point one. crew of seven on board. They'll be up there a week. And as I say, they'll be conducting a number of uh, experiments. They'll be shooting the sun in their language, among other things, to learn more about the sun. Challenger Houston, your go at throttle up. Okay. Engines now back up to 104%. And among other things, they'll have Coca-Cola and Pepsi-Cola cans on board. These are experimental cans in a test of the containers designed to prevent the loss of carbonation and weight losses. Three good fuel cells on challenge. If all goes well, they should be up there one week. That call a precursor to SRB separation. Standing by for SRB set. SRB set. You see it there, boy. That we we have seldom seen pictures quite that clearly. Those are the two Good big SRB solid rocket boosters on either side. As they separate, and they'll parachute back to Earth. And if they're recovered, as they almost always have been, they'll be reused in a future mission. Until they get into orbit, they constantly hit these, hit these check marks so that they, if they have to, they can land in a number of places and in the early stages even turn it around and come back to Cape Kennedy. Return status now being discussed in the MOCAS. All systems are go. Bob Bazell, it looks pretty good from there, doesn't it? 
Uh, it, was a, it was a beautiful launch, Tom. In fact, the weather turned out to be so clear here today that we could see the launch uh, until just a second ago. It went behind its own cloud of exhaust, but I've never seen it so far away. It was uh, more than sub five miles downrange and way up in the sky, and we could still see the flame from the exhaust. I don't think that we've ever had a better television picture of the separation of the solid rocket boosters. Uh, yeah, that, 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 almost as if they happen uh, at arm's length. Yeah, they have very high uh, power telescopes, and because of the clear weather today, they're able to get a very good picture of it. The problem that they had, uh, Tom, by the way, will cause a somewhat of a loss of some of the science data that they wanted. They wanted to get off exactly at 3.23 p.m. Eastern Time in order to get at the right position to see the sun and the earth when they wanted to, but they'll be able to make adjustments, and it won't be that serious. Part of the problem is that they want to they want to be in position for shooting the sun and taking a look at uh, certain star formations and so on. That's right. A lot of astronomy on this mission is weather, as well as some observations of the Earth's atmosphere. Mostly a science mission and also to find out whether certain platforms that are part of the space lab configuration can be aimed uh, exactly right in order to focus in on a particular star, a particular portion of the sun, and that'll be very important for future scientific missions. So this time they'll be just looking to see if those things work, as well as trying them out for some specific experiments. Robert Bazell, thank you very much down there in the Florida sunshine. This uh, Space Shuttle Challenger is due to arrive at Edwards Air Force Base in California one week from today at about 4.12 in the afternoon. It'll be landing at the big dry lake bed out there. And uh, for those of you who wonder about that crew on board, there are seven men altogether and 20 college degrees between them. So they probably are academically qualified. We'll have additional details on this launch and the future of the space program tonight on NBC Nightly News and a good deal of other news as well. For now, I'm Tom Brokaw, NBC News, New York. Two, one, ignition and liftoff. We have liftoff of Challenger in Space Lab 2. The shuttle has cleared the tower. Tower clear. This has been an NBC News report. We now return to our regularly programmed schedule. Other things than work. Oh, I used to know that. <laughs>